And this young man is Devin Morris. And uh, Devin is, is, has his stepdad, Matt, to, uh, to share. Matt, would you come on up and read that? Okay, uh, as Pastor said, my name is uh, Matt Huff. I am Devin's uh, stepfather, and I'm going to read his testimony. <clears throat> my name is Devin. I've been a Christian my entire life, but now at 15 years old, I recognized that I was not actually living for Christ. I spent my childhood going back and forth from my mom's house to my dad's house. My dad lives a very different lifestyle. I have seen, learned, and been through things that a child should never have to go through. I loved my dad with all my heart, and I was too young to recognize his life of sin. I was so confused for a long time. My dad also called himself a Christian. For me, that word just meant that you believed God existed. I did not really understand. When I was in seventh grade, I got in a bad dirt bike accident at my uncle's house. My uncle had to get a friend to take me back to my dad's house, and my dad did not even have a way to take me to the hospital. My mom and Matt drove 30 minutes to pick me up and drive me to the hospital. That same weekend, my mom found out that my dad may be struggling with drugs. Now I know that she tried to get help for us, but they told my mom they could not step in unless he used drugs in front of us. My mom prayed a lot for us and prayed that God would help us and keep us safe. At this time, I was visiting him on Tuesdays and Thursdays and every other weekend. <clears throat> we had just bought a new house in Stanley. Soon, my dad was complaining of my Nana not having enough gas to come get us. My Nana started to just come on Wednesdays and every other weekend. Sometimes, she did not have a ride and we would miss a day. The school year was about to start and we moved to Mount Carmel Christian Academy. I met Pastor Micah and he invited me and my sister to youth group on Wednesday nights. We called my dad and told him that we needed to change days because we wanted to go to youth group. They never got us during the week anymore. One weekend while hunting with my dad, he was so angry with me, he picked me up by my collar. After that, I stopped wanting to visit him. I struggled with this and I blamed God. I thought if God were real, I wouldn't have a father like this. I was angry and sad. I got in a lot of trouble in school. In January of my eighth grade year, I got expelled from Mount Carmel Christian Academy. You would think I hit rock bottom. But with the help of my mom and my principal, Mrs. Vusick, I was able to finish the school year online. My mom made a desk for me at her office. She took me to the gym every morning before we went to her work. Ms. Gregg was so helpful to me. Mr. Kinsley even did video calls with me two times a week. He met us for dinner one day and after our call, and then we got ice cream. Mrs. Vusick allowed me to come in on Fridays so that I could take tests and catch up with my teachers. She never stopped believing in me. I helped with Mrs. Palmer and she was so kind to me. A Christian counselor came to my house each week to meet with me and to help me. I still went to youth group on Wednesdays and saw my friends. One time there was a bad rumor about why I had been expelled. That was hard, but I learned more of who God is. I remembered the song, Reckless Love and the lyrics. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. That summer, my mom got an email that Mount Carmel was going to give me another chance and let me come back. I re-enrolled this school year. I still did not feel like I had a relationship with Jesus. Later in the year, Encounter Revival Ministries came to Mount Carmel. I definitely felt God that week. And on Wednesday, I surrendered to him. I realized the difference in saying that I am a Christian and actually having all that God has offered me. I want to live my life in a way that shows his love. God has provided me with such a good atmosphere here. He provided me with a stepfather that I consider just as much my dad as my biological father. <clears throat> but most of all, he reminded me that he is my father. Amen. Even today, I still have my own struggles, but with God and my family, I will get through them. God had a plan all along, and I have never been better. Please pray for my biological father. I know that God can save him too. I love him, and I desperately want him to experience a life of freedom. 
And if there is anyone here who is confused about their faith, or maybe you don't know what I mean when I say all that God has offered us, maybe you do not understand how to have a relationship with him or where to begin. Maybe you don't know how to read your Bible. I have been where you are. John 1.14 says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. He wants to know you too. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Matt. And da both Dawson and Devin attend uh, Mount Carmel Christian Academy, and uh, you got to hear how uh, what an influence uh, that place has made. And I want, want to just briefly show you with these two guys. Come on up here, Dawson. I'll make sure you can see it too. Uh, there's a there's a number of, of our own church family who serves at Mount Carmel Christian Academy, but there's also a number of people who serve at Mount Carmel Christian Academy who attend other churches in the other in the area. But uh, this is a family here. And so they wanted to come see one of their family be baptized. And so if you're a staff member of Mount Carmel, would you stand up for just a moment? Because I want these guys to see uh, all of those who have made their way here to watch them be baptized. Thank you so much. Look at all this. Amen. Amen. And, and I especially want to say thank you to those of you that came specifically to watch uh, these guys get baptized. That's wonderful. Well, Dawson, would you mind stepping back just, just a hair for me? Good, thank you. Devin, before I baptize you, just have three questions to ask you. Uh, Devin, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who was sent by the Father to bear the sins of the world? Yes. And Devin, have you placed your faith and trust in Jesus as the deliverer of your sins? Yes. And Devin, is it your desire to live a life that pleases Jesus? Yes. Amen. Upon that testimony, have you stepped just a little bit? Forward. I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Good. Aaron, can I invite you to come on up? And would you